now at 11. Booked into jail 146 times. Why do people like this keep getting out? An in-depth look at repeat offenders in Portland and the program that's helping some break the cycle. I finally have a life, like I'm 51 and I know what life is. Christmas tree shortage. Why some local farms have been forced to shut down and how much more you'll be paying for your tree. And later, he disappeared five years ago. Then this local cat turned up in New Mexico. He went on a grand American adventure. We talked to his owner about getting the surprising news. First, getting you caught up on tonight's headlines. We just got word three people died in a crash in Yamhill County today, and that includes a child. This happened on Highway 221, southeast of Amity. Police say a gray Volkswagen crossed into oncoming traffic, hitting a black Chevy. Two adults in that car died. A child who was in the gray car also died. And three others are in the hospital tonight with serious injuries. Oregon State Police are investigating what went wrong. The man accused of shooting his manager at a Wilsonville business Friday appeared in court today. Camilo Santiago Santiago will stay locked up without bail and will be back before a judge next week. He's accused of killing 36-year-old Carl Hellinger at Heritage Specialty Foods. Police say Santiago was a former employee who'd recently been fired. Can they get it done this time? Oregon and Washington's governors met in Vancouver today to commit to finding a replacement for the interstate bridge. The states are chipping in a combined $44 million to open a joint project office. That office will look at funding and design and release a report about a year from now. The states agree there must be some type of high capacity transit across the new bridge. Neither governor ruled out the possibility of a toll bridge. In a KGW special report tonight, we're taking a look at repeat offenders. There are people in Portland who are arrested over and over again. And depending on their charges, they may never spend more than a few days or even just a few hours in jail. Lindsay Nadrich gives us a look at a program that works to rehabilitate those offenders. Even the cops called me Crazy Carol. So my story goes, um, I was an addict child. I grew up in a drug home that was pretty, um, there was no connection of any kind in a positive manner. We were basically raised on and taught how to be a criminal. Carol Hinojosa's life has been far from easy. I'm just gonna put it out there. Like I was pimped out as a baby by my mother and it really changes your mind and your soul. So my life just pretty much spiraled. Addicted and homeless, Carol fought for her life on the streets of Portland. So I just stayed in my tent on the streets and did the best I knew to survive. And the streets are hard on people. Like if your soul's already broken, the streets will break you more. She was broken and caught in a pattern of self-destructive behavior. I went in and out of prison for a while. And she admits that cycle probably would have continued. I would have probably found a meth pipe because I wouldn't have known anything different. She barely remembers the assault that landed her in jail. It was July 13th, 2014, and her life was in a fog. She was high on meth, drunk, and had barely slept in weeks. Court documents say she attacked another homeless woman with a glass bottle, but that attack became a turning point. I finally have a life, like I'm 51, and I know what life is. The assault charge qualified her for a prison diversion program called the Multnomah County Justice Reinvestment Program, or MCJRP for short. But let's put Carol's story on pause for a moment so you can understand why I'm talking about it. I heard about Carol's story because of a man named Brian Linkford. Like Carol, he was arrested multiple times. So many times that he's number four on the list of repeat offenders in Multnomah County. Since 2008, he's been booked into jail 146 times. He's been arrested twice in the same day. Sometimes it was on back to back days and sometimes it was multiple times a week. So someone like Brian Langford, for example, he's now on his 68th conviction. People see that and say, how is that allowed to happen? Yeah, it's an extreme amount of convictions for sure. 
But when you really kind of go through uh, his history and look at it, a lot of it is actually very minor stuff. Multnomah County Senior Deputy District Attorney Nathan Vasquez supervises the Neighborhood and Strategic Prosecution Unit. His office works to find solutions for people who are chronic offenders. These are low level misdemeanors, but it's, it doesn't feel that way to the people who are continually victimized. Absolutely. Sometimes these have absolutely real life impacts on people and that can never be forgotten. And in my case, seeing a situation where I have the fourth highest repeat crime offender of all Multnomah County for bookings um, not being checked, I have a hard time with that. When you ask Tiffany Hammer about Brian Lankford, you can feel her anxiety as she flashes back through that day, so much so that she asked me to retell it instead. In August 2017, Tiffany and her then nine-year-old son left their property near 14th and Montgomery in Goose Hollow. They forgot something, so they quickly came back and found two people she recognized as homeless campers from her street trying to break in. One left, but the other, Brian Lankford, stayed, swinging a tree branch and yelling at Tiffany and her son. They ran back to their car for safety, where they felt trapped until police showed up. That was the hardest part for me is the fact that my little boy was so scared and unable to understand why someone would want to harm us on our property and not leave us after many attempts. It took a while, but in October, Langford was finally sentenced to 36 months of formal probation through the Multnomah County Justice Reinvestment Program. His outcome remains to be seen. But this is where we get back to Carol. She was in that same program, and for her, it worked. I just know I wouldn't be the person I am today without the, de the design of this program of how it works. So how does it work? Instead of going to prison, People in the program get intensive supervision with treatment for things like substance abuse and mental health. They're also connected to housing, mentoring, and employment. I think this program is one of many ways that can better help folks meet their needs, reduce their risk, and stop a life of crime, repair harm to the community, and really get out of our system. Abby Stamp, the director of the Public Safety Coordinating Council, says the program is aimed at the highest risk and highest need defendants. If someone is arrested 50 times and they are convicted 50 times, is arresting and convicting someone working? That doesn't seem to be a very valuable intervention if someone continues to cycle through. Eligibility for the program is based on the crime committed. This is for people who would otherwise go to prison which means people who commit low-level misdemeanors don't meet the criteria. That's why Brian Lankford didn't qualify for it until Tiffany's case. There are exceptions, though. Violent crimes like murder or kidnapping aren't eligible. Over 95% of the people who are in prison come home. What we wanted to do was work up front and identify what folks really need to get onto a path of recovery or wellness or whatever that looks like for the person so that we don't see them in the justice system again. That's the ultimate goal. When Carol heard about it, she was skeptical. She could choose to go to prison or enroll in the program. Although prison sounded easier at the time, she says she decided to take a chance to save her life. They don't give up on you and they help you learn how to rebuild your life. Like I never had a life to rebuild. So like they, I got to build the life. Carol graduated college. She has a job, a car, stable housing, and even a dog named Sam. Smile for the camera. Yeah. Without this program, I would have never known that I was worthy of any of that. Carol would have just been released from prison recently, but instead, she has a life she's proud of. It made me realize that, um, no, I'm worth battling for. And so I battled for myself. Carol's now been sober for four years. When she hits year five, she wants to be a counselor for others struggling with addiction. As for Langford, some people aren't happy he's not in prison. But if he violates any conditions of the program, he could be sent to prison for up to five years. Back to you. Lindsay, thank you. The issue that sparked a Republican walkout in the state legislature this summer will be up for debate again early next year. We're talking about cap and trade, and today the Environmental Coalition Renew Oregon called for action, saying if lawmakers can't get a bill passed this time, they're going to take it straight to the people. If large corporate polluters and their allies don't like the Clean Energy Jobs Bill, they're going to hate 
are ballot measures because they contain even more clean air protections. You know, cap and trade is a term for capping the amount of carbon companies can release into the air. If they stay under the cap, they can trade their leftover emission allowances to others. In addition to the Republican walkout, a proposed cap and trade bill this past summer also sparked protests from loggers. Political analysts say the new bill will have to carve out some exceptions to get it passed for the people to get more people on board. It's going to be even tougher this year to find an affordable Christmas tree. Prices are going up as supply is going way down. In fact, some longtime Christmas tree farms here in Oregon have shut down because of a lack of trees. It's the first time the Kircham Christmas tree farm in Oregon City is shut down in at least 27 years. Because of a shortage of seedlings eight to 10 years ago and the hot, dry summers of 2017 and 2018, there's simply not enough mature trees. We've had families that have brought their kids yeah. back here for their whole life, and the kids have grown up coming here. So that's what's sad, but we don't have a choice. But across the country, we're in the same boat. North Carolina is the second biggest producer. They're having a bit of a shortage as well. Oregon State Christmas tree expert you heard there, Chow Landgren, says he knows of a number of Christmas tree farms that have shut down for good this year. He says along with struggling with drought, growers are facing a labor shortage, so many are moving to less labor-intensive crops like hazelnuts and grass seed. Tollefson from the Christmas tree farm says you shouldn't be surprised to pay about $20 more per tree than you did last year, and the price will likely go up even more next year.